Sorry it took so long to get around to this one, but I had to prepare for this son of a bitch. Welcome to the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection for the PlayStation 2. This is a collection of the game's Street Fighter 3 Third Strike and the main event of today's video. So in Japan, both of these games were separate releases on the PlayStation 2, but in America, we get the Anniversary Collection. And it includes Hyper Street Fighter 2, the Anniversary Edition. What this is, is Super Turbo, but taking the older characters, the older versions of characters, and throwing them in to a, a Street Fighter 2 smorgasbord. So, for my favorite saying in these videos, it is worth noting that this is still Super Turbo. This is Super Turbo with all the old versions of Street Fighter 2 characters thrown in. That means this is Super Turbo. In terms of arcade mode runs, this is the hardest version of Street Fighter 2. And yeah, you can use World Warrior, Champion Edition, Hyper Fighting, Super, or Super Turbo versions of these characters. They play exactly like they did in those respective versions. But we're using Super Turbo. Because honestly, the resources are too good to pass up. I was looking for a character that could handle just about any situation the game throws at it, and in some cases, has actual advantage in certain matchups. We're going with unfamiliar territory here. I don't normally play DJ, but I'm making a big exception. The Super Turbo AI hates you. And I'm still referring to this game as Super Turbo, because despite it being a Hyper Anniversary Edition, the only characters you're going to meet are Super Turbo versions. So, it's another Super Turbo run. Great. I, I hate it. Because if you know anything about Super Turbo and all the various Street Fighter 2 arcade mode runs I've done in the past, this is a emotionless, cold, killing machine of an AI. An algorithm that believes in patterns and perfect reactions, perfect counteractions to whatever you're doing. Changing the difficulty to this game only changes one thing. How many mistakes the AI is allowed to make. That's the only thing that changes. USSR. The exact same behaviors and aggressive reactions are intact regardless of what difficulty you play on. So despite the fact I may have, once again, lowered the difficulty just a skosh, as you will find out later on, it's not going to make a difference.
but DJ here. Getting fucking dropped on his head. Like the people who developed this AI clearly were. DJ is a charge character with great range normals and combo potential out the wazoo. I have to be very careful with Zangief because the matchup here is simple. If he gets in, you die. If he stays out, he dies. I have this wonderful standing medium kick that is technically two hits and pushes him out, but he has many ways of getting in. A rushing power bomb, a green hand to completely negate projectiles. This fight is a complete mess that an experienced Zangief players can make into your worst nightmare. Careful of that. I believe that normally Shoto's are a rough fight for DJ. Mostly because they don't have to waste time charging to perform offense. And neither does the AI for that matter. I think I've been over most of the steps in how this game cheats, but just a reminder. If you learned Street Fighter 2 via the arcade mode of this game, you learned Street Fighter 2 wrong. A couple of reasons. The damage is different for the CPU. Move behaviors are different on the CPU. It can be flat out invincible on certain normals. It has built in algorithms to determine the exact reaction necessary to get out of any situation scot-free. And it has the game on its side to further ensure this outcome. Could not be safe there, but... So, do yourself a kind little favor and check the video length because, spoiler alert friends, we're in this for the long haul. Right. USA. Round one, fight. I don't have the reactions. Didn't press regular back in time. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what you're setting up, the reversals are ensured.
such as me. The only reversal I get, really, is reversal super. Two cross-ups in a row, because I don't understand what they are. This fight is fucking hopeless. That's kind of the way it is. You have to get incredibly lucky. And the luck is clearly not on my side, nor is the game's data. There's absolutely nothing I can do in this situation. I just have to keep blocking and pray. Because despite range being on my side, the frame data isn't. His moves are genuinely faster and have more priority. Did I mention the cross-ups? I'm trying, man. I'm really trying. I'm trying to bait a certain reaction, but I'm not getting it. I tried to get a kick, but no, I'm just out of range. You get rapid fire low kicks, which are not possible. I hate the jump in so much. I hate the jump in so much in this game. Because even if you had the means to counter them, it doesn't matter because they don't exist. The game has been lying to you all these years. There is no anti-air. Anti-air is a theory. I am down back in game. So they just make either unblockable dragon punches or DP is overhead because the game is so good. It's just so demoralizing. so demoralizing to play in arcade mode that it's honestly a shit experience from top to bottom. Any other fighting game released on Earth has a more fun arcade mode than this. Of course it's a double KO because the game is so good.
Like, I've grown to hate Street Fighter 2 over the years. It's well respected, but it's well respected by people who play the game competitively and have fun with it. What the fuck was that? It's well respected by people who play the game competitively and have fun with it, but if you play the arcade mode, however, the game sucks and is the worst piece of shit I have ever played. So you need to understand that my experience is drastically different from everyone else's, because they've had the honor of having several friends who enjoyed the video game. I swear he should have been dead from the kick, but game good. In case you can't tell, I'm going to be more crass than usual, because these arcade modes honestly do not deserve it. Because of shit like that! You expect me to respect a game that can just do that to you at the snap of a finger? Hell no! Oh no, the rose-tinted glasses are off now. I love how I can't hit my cross-ups reliably. And that's just the third fighter! I can't wait to see what further hijinks we're gonna get up to. Such as a Blanca that doesn't care about charge timing. Despite the fact that I should be at advantage in this match, I'm just not. Because when Blanca gets in, you die, and spoilers, he has a lot of good ways of getting in! I could never land those uptick juggles because they just don't exist. I would like to point out to the jury, that is one throw. You could only dream of throw damage doing that much. That would be a horrible nightmare for any competitive game. Now, there are two more points I should add to this conversation. This difficulty in getting through arcade mode is a little of column A, a little of column B. A little bit of I'm not that good at this game, but a lot of bit of the AI is just... an uncaring, soulless monster. Because even pro players who have tried an arcade mode run have been humbled thusly. So I'm not alone in this regard. The data has been there to demonstrate that an arcade mode run is just not the most fun thing available. But much like Martin Prince declaring that he has 17 layers of bathing suits on, and to take your best shot, I brought this on myself. USA. Round one, fight. On 
a positive note, the PS2 version of this game comes with an arranged soundtrack, which actually kind of enhances the experience and makes it seem less of a port and more of an anniversary game. Like a special edition of Street Fighter 2. It's not to be confused with the Sega Genesis version that's actually called Special Champion Edition. Oh my god, yeah, I can't. Alright, Guile, I gotta treat you delicately. Because DJ is just basically Guile with more moves, but there is absolutely no disgracing the original. It helps that my charges are kind of getting thrown off, because the game just sort of slows down at random times for impact, especially when you hit someone with a fireball. Yeah, I didn't have the health to cover that. I'm letting him do this, god damn it all! I don't know why I bothered with air to air fights. The computer wins every time because the game is so good. They always have the better button for the situation, either through means of they don't feel like getting hit, or they have the algorithm built in their head. Combos that just aren't possible in the normal game. Gotta love it. But that the fireball would be out earlier. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Oh my god, I'm an idiot! It's also worth noting that if DJ wants to do the real damage, he has to do a cross-up. Which, yeah, good luck with that.
Here we go. Really slow it down to emphasize the hits. I left him with a little bit of sliver of health left. I should not have done that. Now he's going to cheat his way in. And cheat his way out, because what the fuck is move recovery? Well, good. Nobody wins. A perfect allegory for playing this arcade mode. The only thing that wins here is the CPU and the arcade cabinet for eating your quarters. They're getting paid today. that match was going to be. Japan. And out of one Shoto frying pan and into the Shoto fireball. You know how Ryu be. Faster fireballs, faster reactions. And yet, somehow, he's still a victim. For the moment. Ryu has things Ken does not. If you can believe it. Like, the overhead punch is his own. Some of the normals are his own, like the rushing punch. So it doesn't matter if you've been fighting this character for three decades like I have. His game plan is still the most solid of all the Street Fighters. Because he can just throw out fireballs with no remorse. I basically compiled a small list of arcade mode runs I would rather do than another Street Fighter 2. And that includes Street Fighter the movie. Because at least I could have fun with that. I like how just because you throw someone into a dizzy doesn't mean you can throw them again. I 
I think some of the KOF had more fun arcade runs. I know I'd rather play 98. As well, 98 has that shit regal at the end. The journey to get there is still fun. I don't get randomly stunned off of fireballs. Which, for the record, is a carryover from World Warrior. Three fireballs directly to the face and you're stunned. Super Turbo is more reserved when it comes to stun, but not by much. Yep. Like, the CPU does not take kindly to cross up, so that game plan is getting thrown out. I'm trying to bait certain things. Nah, clearly that ain't happening. <laughs> Whew, glad I did that on reaction. Didn't even think a Tatsu was coming. Tried to walk up and throw, but uh, Dragon Punch just beat everything. Super? No. Nothing? Super? No. Nothing? Okay. They're so strict when it comes to charge supers. If you press any other direction, no. It doesn't give you it. I'll take it. Right. So before we get to the four grand masters, I have to face the worst possible enemy myself. No, mine are better than yours. Super there. Doesn't matter, I won anyway. Right. Like, DJ Super is a good reversal, but it's a matter of the game does not give you the benefit of the doubt in any capacity.
It is just kind of, yeah. EJ can just catch Balrog in his windup. There are very few moves that are like, near instant. So it's another matchup where if he gets in, you're dead. If you keep him out, he's dead. Ain't enough headbutts in the world that can save him there. Because standing roundhouse is your friend. Unlike... Spain. This human-sized piece of excrement. Round one, Vega is still the worst matchup for DJ. I don't care what any professional player's opinion is. I don't care what any guy, guide or walkthrough's opinion is. Vega is DJ's worst matchup. You think DJ has range? Welcome to the Crown Prince of Range. You, win. Get it. you can give me hard data, but I can give you hard feelings. Vega can just roll his way out of any disaster. Sometimes even through the Sobot kicks. Which, spoilers, I need those to survive. Oh, I'll take it. So here's Sagat. And while usually Sagat is not a problem for me, it really depends on the character I'm using. Because normally, I can understand what Sagat's behavior is going to be, what his next action is going to be. But it really, really depends. Because the four Grand Masters, Grand Kings, I forget what the terminology was in the old days. I think it's Grand Masters? Or am I, no, it's Grand Kings. Because Grand Master Challenge. The Grand Kings, their behavior and actions do not change based on who they fight. They will approach you the same way, regardless of what character you use. I shouldn't have gotten that close. Oh, of course he's not going to do a fourth. Duh. Duh. I'm stupid. The limit on fireballs is three and then reset pattern. When you come to understand this, you only grow stronger from the experience. Ah, my fault for just jumping as opposed to walking. But that's always, always been my weakness, no matter what game I play. Running when all you had to do was walk. Yeah, he has the exact range pinned out.
Got it! So got data successfully copied. Apparently he did a revision update. A quick firmware patch to the Sagat program. I see. Alright, gotta not jump, gotta not jump. Just plant your feet to the ground. Plant your feet to the fucking ground! jump when it is absolutely positively necessary. Thailand. Now here's Bison. Bison is not a pushover here. With max level AI at his back, his maneuverability is incredibly deceptive. You don't know what move he's going to do until it's too late. Your fight is over faster than you can recite a rap lyric. Ah. I think I might have been down backing that, oh well. Okay. Thailand. Minor refresh. Let's get down to business. Yeah. Dictator's who I normally play, so I know his weapons. Just back off. Okay. Yep, he's just he just reacts too fast. Doesn't matter what move I do, his moves are better than mine. In terms of Vega is his worst matchup, Bison's his second worst. I should have been down backing. I was hoping for up kicks, but not fast enough. I'm playing like garbage. That's not what a combat-hungry dictator like Bison desires. He's got better things to do than trounce my worthless ass. Right. 
but fighting Bison in Hyper is the hardest Bison I've ever fought. It just feels like he's more aggressive than even Super Turbo. He does more combos than usual. He just has better air-to-air -air reactions because it's this game. Son of a whore! I should not have won that. There we go! I don't have to play shitty Street Fighter 2 arcade modes! Let's go! So that is Hyper Street Fighter 2. I'm gonna go take a very, very long nap, much like DJ himself, because the next game I play cannot possibly be more aggravating than this. It can't.